Hello and welcome to Spectrum today. Glad to be back with you. Brand new years. We're just in the opening days of a brand new year. How did you celebrate your new year coming in? This was interesting. We had our first service where uh, I'm the lead pastor at Evangel Christian Center on January the 1st in the evening. And uh, by the way, man, we had a great time as we, we started our brand new maturity series and would love to get, if you want to come out for that maturity series, we just started it. It's a good one. It'll help you to, to know how to grow. It gives you practical steps to growing in things of Jesus. But as I was talking to people, they were talking about how they rang in their new year. Isn't it uh, uh, unique that so many folks ring in the new year by staying home? <laughs> they're, they're a little afraid to be out there. And I uh, sadly heard that, you know, we had too many people drinking and driving in our, in our area and was su- kind of surprised, but really not. I have to say, really wasn't surprised by this. Right about midnight, all of a sudden you start getting these notifications that say, hey, did anybody else hear gunshots? And, and you know, people are shooting, uh, I guess, up into the air. I, 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 I. Not a good idea. Well, for everything that stays the same, there will be some changes in 2020. So stay with me for the next few minutes. We're going to talk about some 2020 changes. Here's one that you better get ready for if you're at least in the central New Mexico area. Of course, we have viewers throughout New Mexico up into some of our other neighboring states, southwest Colorado and northeast Arizona. But Remember that those single-use bags heading out the door. I had somebody talk to me earlier, and they were saying, are you ready for that? Do you have your bags uh, prepared in the car? I have to say we have bags in the car, but am I ready for that change? Well, it's not just here. It is happening in other parts of the country as people are moving away from these single-use bags. Now, here's a, a thought. Do you like it? I'm not sure that I'm sold on it yet, but I also have come to this reality. I'm not sure they care how I feel about it, right? <laughs> You're going to have to kind of get used to it. Oh, I suppose if there was a complete outrage and a upset, that maybe that would uh, put pressure on people to, to make uh, some uh, concessions. But m- many states are moving over to these uh, changes with how they're going to be allowing you to, to bag your food and take it, take it out out the door. So just be ready for that because it is happening, prohibiting retailers and other businesses from giving these single-use bags. Uh, New Mexico, I know we had that happen, I think, in some parts of the state. Oregon's ban went into effect January 1st. Maine and New York State and Vermont have similar prohibitions happening later on in the year. And uh, where we've been, you've been seeing people running out of the plastics prior to the end of the year bags and starting to get you those paper bags, which I understand in some cases, some of the bags they're going to charge you for if you don't use the bring your own. So, oh well. Telling us that small businesses are really going to be the ones who are going to be impacted with some things as they hit the new year. And if you're a small business owner, be aware, be attentive. I am amazed at how hard it is to stay up to date. Do you find that? I mean, I, I, you can try, but you're still not really fully up to date all the time. But here's some things. Let's see if we can keep you in the loop a little bit. New overtime rules are impacting Americans. And uh, this was one that could especially impact folks in the restaurant business. Food industries could really be affected. They think that an estimated 1.3 million workers uh, could end up gleaning overtime that didn't get it before. Workers earning under $684 per week or $33,568 must now be paid overtime. That that standard or threshold was significantly lower prior. It was $455 a week or realistically about $23,660. So if... uh, now, if you're an, an hourly person, that probably is a little different deal because you probably are they're already calculating for that. A lot of times this is if folks were being uh, salaried, but the salary didn't break out to that much. Then you'd start doing the math and you figure it out. That could, think about that. 1.3 million Americans could end up getting a raise. Of course, there's another side. So don't forget that the other side of that is that some of those people, they're, going to, they're already talking about they're moving to reduce their hours because they want to keep them under the threshold. They don't, maybe the business doesn't have the money to, to be paying them in that way. Something else to watch for. If you are newly employed in 2020, be prepared for the fact that there are new W-4s coming out. Why? 
Well, you recall that back in 2017, in the waning hours of 2017, you remember how Congress passed a new tax bill, right? And they told you you would get more money in your check in 2018. A lot of people saw that happen. They maybe even saw that happen in 2019. But here we are now moving into 2020, and they're changing those W-4s up, uh, kind of doing away with how you calculate some of those deductions. All right. Now, if you already have some one file, don't worry about it. They're not, I don't think you have to go out and get another one. I, I don't believe so. But if you, if you choose to make some changes, you're probably going to get a new W-4 or to get a new job. So there's another newbie that's out there on the horizon that you're going to have to, to be, uh, be thinking a little bit about. It seems like the folks in California are always having changes. And this one, ha one of these has to do with uh, more control over your personal information that companies can collect and share with other businesses without uh, permission. This is, is hoping, however, to exempt um, very, very small companies. Um, but those that do business with California residents, including out-of-state firms, probably going to have to con come compliant and comply. My encouragement to you is don't live in fear. Re remember this scriptural principle. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of soundness of mind. And you know, a lot of times we don't like change. You don't like change. You probably like a lot of folks. Want it to stay the same, but there is one thing in life that you are going to find remains constant, and that is change. Change is going to come. It comes to us in the, in the realm of our taxes. It comes to us in the well, realm of our wages. It comes to us in the realm of, of uh, the fuel economy of your car or, uh, you know, in, if how you're, how, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you, you name some of them, but realize that there are going to be changes. So I just kind of throw that out there for you as we're starting this new year to let you know. And I would be interested, you know, give us a call at the station and just let us know here at Alpha Way Broadcast what you think specifically of the new uh, feedback with the bags. Do you like the paper bags or do you miss the plastic? Are your eggs safer than ever now that you're all trying to jam everything into one bag? Are you just more gentle than you used to be? Do you have enough of those multi-use bags in the car? How many folks are going to find themselves unprepared at the grocery store? I I, that's the one that hits me. And then I, we were into some other places in just those last few days of 2019, early days of 2020, and you're just seeing changes all around. But you know what? The one thing that you can take to the bank is this reality. God never changes. Isn't that good? His love for you is the same. Scripture puts it this way. His mercies are new every morning, but... It also says that God is the same yesterday and today and forever. And I love that because in the midst of a changing world, the one thing that you can take confidence in is the fact that Jesus' love for you never changes. Now, most of us probably know somebody who needs to hear about a life change in their spirit and in their life and their heart and in their mind. And they've been going through some things. And they, they feel alone. You need to share with them of the unchanging love of God. Now, you can't, can't get away from change. You can't get away from the fact that, you know, your, your phone's going to change. Your computer's going to change. We, we had a, a neat opportunity this last few days as my daughter was getting ready to go back to college. And we made a trip to the computer store. You know what? I realized that my watch is out of date. You know what? You have a, a, a new uh, cool watch and it doesn't take long until you're four or five versions behind, aren't you? Three or four at least. And, and you say, wow, how do I, she was asking me as we left, how do you know if that really was going to be a waste of money or if that was something that was really going to be a good update? Sometimes it's hard to know. Sometimes you just feel like, did I, did I miss it? Did I do the right thing? But get into well, I'm very practical again, get into the Word of God because the pr timeless principles that are never changing are found for you and for me in God's Word. Here's one. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you place God's Word in your heart, you will not sin against God. Oh, how about a soft answer turns away wrath? You know, Pastor, I, 
Boy, I found that. I've been, the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me about that. Yeah, you know, I don't need to have a comment about everything. Sometimes it's good to just not say anything at all. Just wait. And then a few minutes later, I realized, oh, maybe that wouldn't have been quite as cunning or cute as I thought. And then a few seconds later, I'm thinking, I'm just glad I didn't say anything at all. Why is that? That speaks to us about the timeless power of God's word. His word is indeed timeless. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Well, 2020 is going to be a great year. I look forward to it. Ruth and I are going to enjoy this year with you. We're going to have a lot of fun, great guests, wonderful time together. We'll be back in a minute. We're so privileged to have with us today Barb Mulvey and Chris Paulson, who are two local authors who have, <laughs> in fact, uh, jointly put together a wonderful children's book called Pretty Bunny Has a Hurt Heart. Ladies, Welcome. thanks for joining us today. Good it's morning. great to be here. We're glad, go to have you. glad to have you back. Both came in yeah. days previous, but not under this uh, circumstance to talk about this topic. Mm -hmm. We want to just jump right in, Barb, and, and talk a little bit about why did you write a book about pretty money? We, we want to know the details. Tell us about this children's book. <laughs> well, what happened is we had the opportunity, uh, we were asked to go to Honduras to a uh, orphanage to talk about sexual abuse. And I quickly realized that the book that we have, which is Hope Ahead, was far beyond the understanding of children. Mm. And so I just thought, I don't know what to do. And I was praying about it and I felt I should try to write a children's book. So that's wow. what I did. So I sat down one um, Friday. We were supposed to go skiing. There was no snow. We were already there. And so I just, we talked about it and it just flowed right out. It was amazing. So isn't that wonderful when it just happens? You yes. Know that God's in it and He gives it to you. And so the story is about Pretty Bunny and uh, Mr. Fox. And he is the one who hurts her and uh, how she walks through that and how she finds healing and hope. And at the very end of the book, she's helping other little mm -hmm. children or little creatures, I guess we should say, mm -hmm. who've been hurt as well. Aww. So you mentioned that this came out as an outgrowth of a, of a trip to Honduras. Well, we didn't go in the end. Oh, but you didn't get to we go? We didn't get to go. Oh, but what okay. we did do is decide to write a book to help them. So it's actually, um, Pretty Bunny is going to be, it's in the process of being trans, uh, translated yes. into Spanish. Okay. Wow. Wow, interesting. Now tell us about the last, uh, the questions in the last few chapters and where they came from. Well, the questions are really the questions that I had. And as a biblical counselor, I mm -hmm. hear the same questions over and over again. Chris and I have probably taken about 500 really? women through Hope Ahead, mm -hmm. and we hear recurringly the questions. The thing about being abused, especially as a child, is you don't have the ability to understand that you are being, that all of the blame is being put on you. Mm -hmm. And you naturally take it. You, you assume that it was your fault. So one of the questions is, am I a bad bunny? Because that's exactly how we feel. Mm -hmm. We feel really that there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. And those are the questions that we hear over and over again. So we're trying to address those questions to, to a child and say, no, it isn't what what happened. Uh, yeah. It's not what you did. It's what was done to you. And we call that sin in the book because mm -hmm. that's really what it is. Wow. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's great hope because yes. God has an answer for sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they were sinned against. And that's the hope that we want to give them. Wow, that's wonderful. Chris, let's uh, bring you into the conversation a little bit more today. How do you envision this book being used? Is it's, it's obviously a children's book dealing with 
real life mm -hmm. problems. Very difficult. Are, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, trauma. Things that people mm -hmm. don't always like to even talk about, although I think they're being talked about more today than they were maybe five or 10 yes. years ago. Yeah. The, the current verbiage is adverse child experiences. Uh, ACE, ACEs, and so they talk about the number of ACEs that a child has, which lead to suicide in the future. It leads to depression. It leads to, you know, a, wow. a divorce. I mean, the, the, the results of the ACEs are astounding, and they've, they're doing more and more studies for that. I envision this being used not only in counseling, but also I could see a grandma reading it to her granddaughter and just reading it together and uh, listening to her talk about and explore her feelings and also just saying, reassuring her, no, you're not a bad bunny. No, mm -hmm. he did a bad thing to you, but that doesn't make you bad. And there are bad creatures in the world. And uh, it's a very sweet story. And um, the women who've read it uh, fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. We have beautiful illustrations and uh, done by our sweet friend Melissa Selecki and she's a pastor's wife here in Albuquerque and she uh, did the drawings for us that, and that's a it's gift just in itself <laughs> yeah it's very relatable uh, we it, we wrote it at a fourth grade level okay. and so we anticipate really letting moms uh, walk their girls through it so well you know I, I think um, trust is a big issue when uh, especially Huge. when you're when you're young and who do you tell yeah and so it's very it's a very sensitive book i would think right. and so one that would need to be really prayed about before you introduce it or yes. how you introduce it would you yeah. think that's yeah it's true and we are very careful not to say anything uh, difficult we just talk about the abuses having a messy dress okay. but and we do address the issue of secrets and we mm -hmm. talk about the fact that the reason the person wants to keep it a secret is to keep them from getting in trouble Mm -hmm. But what we hear as a child is that it will keep us uh, uh, not being in trouble. So, because we own all of it, because that's what happens when you're abused, is that the abuser puts all of the problem on you, and so we own it. Have you seen a lot of need for a book like this, Chris? One Sadly. That, that is really needed yes. on a regular basis, and there's just a hole where this will fill that hole? Yes, very. Um, this is not a preventative book. We mm -hmm. talk about good touch and bad touch, but it's when something has happened, how to get over it. So it's not a, it's not a, you know, being aware of your body and saying no. It's okay. when something bad has happened, mm -hmm. how do you get back to life okay. from that? And children are so, um, you know, they're, they come back to life much faster than we as adults do. And so we just want to give them every tool that we can. Mm -hmm. The same in the Hope Ahead book. Uh, mm -hmm. We just give the women lots and lots of tools to be able to fight the lies that are in their head and to right. fight the, the self-condemnation and the shame and the um, self-hatred and feeling like I'm worthless because somebody misused me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of that, we just want to bring them back to life. It's very future focused. Wow. Well, Barb, the, this version is a children's version of the Hope Ahead book. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. And tell us more about the Hope Ahead book. As Chris was saying, it really is a book of looking to the future. Um, when I first began trying to get help with my issue, most of the books just told me how messed up I was, but there was no, that I knew. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted, to, I wanted help, and so we really sat down over years. It took us 15 years to write Hope Ahead. Wow. Uh, as a biblical counselor, we bring in so much scripture, and we talk more about, about the process of Hope Ahead. Hope Ahead is, is designed, because a lot of people might not know what that is, so give us more detail about it. It is a book written to help women who've been sexually okay. abused, and what we do in it is we first help them understand what's going on. Um, they're very quirky. We're, we're very quirky. We have quirks because we believe lies that we've been told over and over again. And so we live life kind of differently. We have what we call 10 reactions to two problems where we get really uh, triggered is the, mm -hmm. is the modern world where we get really triggered. And so what we've done is try to help them what, 
understand what's happened to them and God's solution, which is when you have been sinned against, eventually we lead them to forgiveness. We don't start there because that's too difficult to understand, but we do get there and that's where the freedom is. It's really a Christian discipleship book, mm -hmm. realizing that you're not responsible for the bad thing that happened to you, realizing right. that you can scorn the shame, you can reject the shame, you can live in joy, you can deal with spin masters, you can uh, mm -hmm. take your thoughts captive, mm -hmm. you know, Christian Discipleship 101. And uh, like Barb said earlier, we've taken more than 500 women through the classes. Wow. And uh, we know. just see women getting their lives back and not living in you know, despair. Yeah, that's wonderful. It, have, it, it is a mindset you have to change and yes. start begin to to wash your mind and your thoughts with yes. the Word of God. And who does he, God say that I am? Exactly. Yeah. Not, yes. not yes. the thoughts knowing of, that they're a love that child you feel about yourself. And yes. not a victim. Um, when something happens, and we always many times regress to those awful thoughts. We do. And you have to continually keep your mind in the Word, and can and believe it. Yes. And um, one thing that I we I was. I don't, place in a service once and the and the speaker said just say out loud god loves me right how many times do you say god loves me, me. i mean i believe it for you right you know? but to say it out loud for myself is right. something totally different yeah yes. so even if we can say that to ourselves god loves me because he does yes it, it, that begins to change you and soften your heart i always say you're god's favorite mm -hmm. there you go that's and you're great god's favorite <laughs> and he says god's that often. Favorite. <laughs> that's awesome and the that's women great. just go really yeah. It, yes. and, and it takes them a while mm -hmm. to believe it. You know, it takes them about a month and they'll come back and then they'll say in our discussion, oh, I'm God's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's great. Yay. Yay. Is there only one book that you're going to write? Are you planning a series? How do you plan on going forward? Well, we're this? hoping this will be the first of a series and right. we're going to help children deal yeah. with uh, parents who've divorced or a best friend who's betrayed them or, you yes. know, people who lie about them and wreck their reputation. and. We're hoping there will be a whole series of Pretty Bunny books. As we close Wonderful. today, tell us how folks can find the book. Uh, Hopeahead.org is the okay. website. Okay. It The Kindle book is already available on uh, Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, the real print book will be on Amazon probably in a couple of weeks, so by okay. the end of November. Wonderful. Our guest today, Barb Mulvey and Chris Paulson, talking to us about a brand new children's book helping those who have faced abuse entitled Pretty Bunny Has a Hurt Heart. I encourage you to look for it. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. As we close our time together today, I, I want to do two things. First thing I want to do is invite you and encourage you to get on the mailing list. If you are not, we're about to send out our first update for 2020. And I would encourage you to get on the mailing list. All you have to do to do so is call us at 505-884-8355, dial extension 101. That'll get you to somebody in the office area and they will help you. They'll gonna tie you in and get you all the information you need so you can get a monthly update, a, an update of things that are happening, new programs, got some great new programs. Glad to have Joyce Myers back on the air. Hope that you've enjoyed seeing Joyce back with us. Uh, we've got some other great folks joining with us in 2020. Start watching for some of those new programs. Second thing that I want to do is encourage you to give. Many of you have been giving, and uh, we are so thankful. This new year, we're going to begin the process of raising money for something new called ATSC 3.0. Now, I will start telling you more about that. You're like, what in the world is that? I'm just trying to get used to HD. Well, it's all right. It's all right. It's not here yet, but it's coming. It's on the horizon a few months away. ATSC 3.0. And I'll be talking more to you about that as we begin the process of raising funds and raising awareness so that we can stay technically competitive and uh, useful to you in the decade of the 2020s. Isn't that cool? 2020s. Man, I love the way that sounds. I thought we'd be like the Jetsons, though, flying around in cars by now. But that's okay. We're not yet. Well, maybe that's for next year. Who knows? 
Here's the final thought that I want to give to you today. Remember how to give is you can give online, www.kzq32.org. You can mail it, Alpha Omega Broadcasting, 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast, Albuquerque, 87109. Or here's one that a lot of people like to do. Just pick up the phone and say, I would like to make a donation. And the person on the other end of the phone line can uh, here at our office uh, at 505-884-8355, extension 101, can take credit card or debit card information and process that for you as a one-time donation or an ongoing donation. Now, as we end, my invitation to you as pastor at Evangel Christian Center is to come join me and Ruth as we are at services on a regular basis, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Friday nights at 6 o'clock, and then two opportunities on Sunday, 9 and 1045. As we start the new year, I'm going to be sharing a brand new series entitled The Problem with Faith. And you might look at that and say, what problem is there with faith? Well, it's really, a, you have to, to learn more, but it's really the problem that we have engaging our faith and staying in the place that God has to be. It's going to be good stuff. Don't miss it. 9, 10, 45 this coming Sunday and share with us. God bless you. Have a blessed day.